Hello and welcome again to Room 5. My name is Jim Trainer. I want to talk to you today about Mario Vargas Llosa and specifically what was he doing the morning he found out that he'd won the Nobel Prize for Literature. The day he found out that he'd won the Nobel Prize, it was a memorable date, memorable for him obviously, easy to remember for us, the 10th of the 10th of 2010. That was the 10th of, that's October, isn't it, of uh, 2010. He was in New York. I think I'm right in saying that. He was certainly in the States. He was lecturing at a university, lecturing to young students there. Um, it was five o'clock in the morning. He got up, and what was he doing? What do you know, people of his stand, you know, status do at five o'clock in the morning? They're preparing the lectures. That's the kind of man he is. Mario Vargas Llosa, five o'clock in the morning, preparing the lectures for the students later on that week. He then had the plans for the day. He was off to the library in New York to, to do, prepare, prepare an article he was writing for the newspapers. Half past five, he suddenly feels the presence of his wife, Patricia. She's there, a bit nervous, saying, Mario, there's a phone call in English. The implication being that she doesn't speak very much English. He took the phone call and uh, it was to say, they were phoning from the, the Academy and to say that he'd been awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature and that this would be made public at six o'clock. This, in fact, was 14 minutes to six. And if you get the chance, there's an article written by him and it's called 14 Minutes to Think About It or something, to that, uh, something in that vein. He tells his wife, what does his wife say? This is wonderful. First thing his wife says is, Mario, we must tell the children. And Mario says, well, let's wait till it's really official, because he did remember cases where hoaxes had been carried out on people, you know. You get that phone call from people pretending to be from the Academy to say you won the Nobel Prize, and in fact you hadn't. So Mario says, let's wait just in case. She says then, to wonderful, typical wife, she says, uh, you'd better get a shower and get a shave, because if it's true, this place, there's going to be pandemonium on at uh, six o'clock. Six o'clock came, it was announced, and uh, he had been awarded the, 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 the prize. Jumping ahead to the actual award-giving ceremony, and his wife, Patricia, she kept saying to the children, apparently, before the ceremony, why doesn't Mario let me see the text of what he's going to say? Partly because what he had to say was about her, and he tells the tale of how important she had been in his life. He also tells the tale that whenever he put his foot in it, you know, made mistakes, didn't do this well, didn't do that well, she would say to him, Mario, the only thing you're good for is writing. He rather liked that, in fact, and he took that as, a, as an immense compliment. Mario Vargas Llosa, immensely grateful to Spain. That come, that's apparent in the speech he makes for what Spain offered to him. And as a final comment, how is it that people like Mario Vargas Llosa and Julio Cortaza, García Márquez, are so popular, so well-liked in the English-speaking world? And this is to name a man, Gregory Rabassa. And he's a translator from New York, and he's the man who's helped to make all three of them very, very popular with the English-speaking audiences. Come back to Room 5 with lots more to tell you.